from a local New Yorker, uh, Mr. Neil Curtis, the um, yes, the executive director of Farm Up Jamaica, to talk to us about um, another aspect of uh, investing in Jamaica. Neil Curtis, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, uh, well, a lot of snow on that screen. Good evening, everyone. How is everyone doing? Has anyone heard of Farm Up Jamaica? Good. Um, we're going to talk about some problems, and we're going to talk about some solutions. And as soon as we get this up here, so we see everyone, we're going to look at this video real quick. And this is a video that we were told was created by a Chinese investor. And we just want to ask a question. Are we really going to sit back and let Jamaica disappear before our eyes and then decide afterward to, to, make, to make it happen? So... There you go. So a Chinese investor said this is what he wants Jamaica to look like when he's done putting it together. Downtown. Portmore. They have big dreams for Jamaica. Sounds funny. Somebody took the time out to do this. Okay. <laughs> I found it funny, but again, someone took the time out to plan this for Jamaica. So whether it is what we want it to be or not, people are seeing the viability and the vision that things can get really good in Jamaica. As you see, it's starting with the stock exchange, right? The greatest thing about the stock exchange is that it gives us an opportunity to become a part of something that we hadn't touched before. Now, the next thing is, over the last few years, we have been able to realize that people that you work with at your jobs want to go to Jamaica. And they want to have an experience. to uh, visit us here in Jamaica to plant ginger from doTERRA. To plant ginger. To plant ginger. Okay? Not to build a building, to plant ginger. The hope is that when we harvest this ginger, that when we do a distillation, that it has the same chemical profile as the earlier ginger that we tested here from Jamaica. If it does, it's an exciting new source for ginger. Um, and if we can create a damper that ginger with doTERRA and we can expand this farm and create a great uh, export for working with the people that uh, have cleared this land and the benefit from this. Uh, and we also have a number of students with us uh, from the local uh, college that are Nakalva College. Farmers. Our students will walk you through the process of planting ginger, establishing a ginger field, and they will be the persons that will watch over this project until the end of it comes maybe in another 12, 10 to 12 months. So today, it's basically, you're going to do the labor, if you want to put it that way, while we instruct you on what to do. We're putting a partnership together between Harvard, Jamaica, the Terra, and the students to make sure that um, when this ginger is reaped, that these, they're able to profit share in this ginger. 
ultimately they're going to become entrepreneurs and they'll be able to graduate from school and then have something else to do. Okay, thank you. So, um, apparently, there are opportunities in Jamaica. What we've done over the last five years is identify the opportunities, find out what is wrong. Because when I look at farming and agriculture in Jamaica, we realize that you can't just come up with some money and say, let's just plant some food in Jamaica. Most of the Jamaican farmers that we come across are operating with a system that is probably 100 years old. Now, farming has technology, and technology has advanced over the last 100 years. So when you think about going back to Jamaica and putting some money in your cousin's hand so he can plant some ginger, you've made a big mistake. Because I'm just saying, I'm not saying that you don't want to do that. You do want to help. But they have to do it the right way. So what Farm Up Jamaica has done is come up with organic, non-GMO farming practices to help reduce the importation of foreign food into Jamaica, increase Jamaican exports, put young, put young people, young Jamaican students, as you saw in the video, people from schools that are interested in agriculture, but don't get the opportunity to practice. Put them into business. I don't want to give them any jobs because the Jamaican minimum wage can't put anybody, give anybody a, a true living. And you're going to continue to send the remittance to sustain, to sustain them because it's not enough money. So we need to put them in business. They need to be able to make money. And with that, we can reduce the crime and poverty. Because if people have something to do, they're not looking to attack you. No. So, we believe that Jamaicans abroad are the answer. And our organization is a 501c3. We're a nonprofit. The reason we started as a nonprofit is because the Jamaica, in the agriculture sector, you have to build the foundation first. In other words, there's some social work that we needed to do. We needed to find out why they, they, they told us that the young people are lazy and they don't want to work. Since then, we found what was wrong, and we've trained 600 young people in agriculture. Organic, non-GMO agriculture. They told us that there was, a, there was a, a problem with onions, and that onions were being imported. Um, and onions were being imported. Onions were being imported at um, 10,000 tons per year. Uh, so the, the onions that are being imported, 10,000 tons per year. Hmm? Okay. And so, right forward, thank you. And so we said, okay, as Jamaicans that live abroad, why don't we come together and start to help onion, to produce onions. And so we can have a measurable impact and we can show exactly what we did, right? We're going to help to grow onions, to reduce the importation of onions, put more young people back to work and what have you. So again, that is the picture. Over the last years, we've done research and development that tells us that we are ready to what we call expand our scale. That is gonna that's going to take all of us in order to do that. So, here we are. The question is, where are we at the table? As you look at the landscape of Jamaica and you see all the foreigners buying up all the land, where are we at the table? That's the question you must ask yourself. The table is empty as it relates to us. About 12% of Jamaicans that live abroad are investing in the Jamaica Stock Exchange. Only 12%. I'm like, no, 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 wait a minute. Oh, no, no, no. No, 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 I'm sorry. I just gave you guys too much credit. <laughs> Only 1%, 1% of Jamaicans living abroad 
are investing in the stock market of Jamaica. Now, think about it. Bloomberg said it's number one. All the arrows are point pointing in the right direction. If we sit back and do nothing, we are all to be blamed. Nobody's mistake but your own. All right. Jamaica imports approximately $1 billion US dollars in food annually. So now I just want you to think about that. So you want to you ask the question, well, if we put all of our young people back to work, where is Jamaica going to get the money to pay all of these young people? There's a billion dollars sitting on the table. And it's being paid to Costa Rica, to Miami, to New North Carolina, New Jersey, wherever they're buying all of these things, California, and they're feeding these hotels. And now we see where we can take that $1 billion and redistribute it back to our young people across Jamaica. Less importation equals a stronger Jamaican dollar. Dollar. Okay. <laughs> I think we forgot the R on that one. <laughs> a dollar. I write thing. Sorry, a patwa. Jamaican dollar. All right. So, the less. Uh, next slide, please. Uh oh. Where are we? So, the process, and so you know, we, when we first got down there about 2014, we got a real strange phone call from the World Bank. And they wanted to meet with Farm Up Jamaica. And he says, you know, we like what you guys are doing. It sounds good. So I, he says, and do you realize that what you guys are doing can really have an impact on fixing or correcting or slowing down the devaluation of the Jamaican dollar? So I said, well, we didn't really think about it that deep, but tell us, how does it work? So he says, right now, we're buying U.S. currency to pay for foreign goods and, um, and food that's being imported in. And the less of that that we do will help to bolster our Jamaican dollar. And also, what Andrew told me last night is that it also pushes up the value of the American dollar. So we're not trying to build America. We're trying to build Jamaica, right? So if we're going to build Jamaica, we have to look at the... We need to know why things are the way they are. And so you look at the more U.S. currency bought, the less the Jamaica dollar is worth. So if we are taking that Jamaican converted, let's say $1 billion, whatever that converts to in Jamaican money, which the numbers are a lot. <laughs> the zeros are long, right? And we redistribute that to young people in Jamaica and now... The money is feeding back into the economy, and the economy is now doing well. And the stocks that you just bought at the stock exchange, those companies start to do much better because there's another one billion dollars circulating in the local economy. This is how we change the, the, the problem. So they say import substitution, right? Import substitution is when you start to grow a food that is normally being imported. But to me, that's kind of backward. It doesn't sound right. Because we were growing that food before you started importing. Right? So is it farm substitution when we grow that food? There's something wrong with that statement. Right? Next slide. So we see that the best investments in Jamaica... Starting right now, first, stocks. And tonight, I'm sure, how many of you are going to actually sign up? Hands. <laughs> no, man, I said it's only 1%. You didn't hear that? Only 1%. You guys have to get involved. Simple. The second, agriculture. Agriculture represents 6% of the Jamaican GDP, only 6%. Tourism, right? Tourism represents 60% of the Jamaican GDP, 60. So that means that technically, there's not enough food in agriculture to feed tourism. Much, right? Just tourism, we're not even talking about people. 
Third, we think it's real estate. Real estate always proves well all around the world. So if you buy land, buy house, and I'm telling you, I, I'm, in the, I'm in the deep, deep country. I'm in the deep, deep country eight to nine times a year in Jamaica. And sometimes I'm way up in the bush and I see these little Russian people come out on their backpacks and their tents from the cockpit country and all these places. And they are looking and surveying and they're figuring out which part of your family land them going come get. <laughs> Remember that? So I'm going to fix up on a title. And the last, <laughs> fix up on a title. The last is tourism. We see where you saw that agrotourism. We call it agrotourism, where you bring people, all your friends that we all work with in the hospitals and the, and the offices. Let's take them to Jamaica on a different experience. Let them come with you because they feel safe. And believe me, don't worry about crime because crime is not going to happen because you're going to have a group of people. They don't attack groups. They attack you singularly. <laughs> so you come in with your group, ban up with your people them from your job, and go in and t turn your four-bedroom house into a what them call a, a Airbnb for the week. You went to Jamaica to your mom's old house. You came back with a couple of 3,000, 4,000 in pocket. Nothing wrong with that, right? There are options. There are things that we can do, but we're not thinking. So now we need to open the mind and start to think about what we can do in Jamaica as Jamaican diaspora, or Jamaicans that live abroad, if you want to call it that. Okay? I ask of you guys, let's invest together. And that's a problem that Jamaicans have for a long time. We don't want to do things together. We want to do things separately. So then what happens? You hear about a little man around there so again, or a next man over there so. But if we were working together, if I knew, if we all knew in this room how many of us were going down next week, then guess what? We could communicate with each other next week. And we could say, you know what? I'm in Portland. And I tell you, all right, I'm going to bring my, my family member and we hook up. Start to. We speak the same language. Diaspora language is a bit different than the original Jamaican language. So we know that certain things, you, 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 you know, we, we just have to work together. What we want to do in the future is we want to create an investment club. And I spoke. <laughs> myself, Andrew Morris from Sam's Caribbean Marketplace, um, Nala Royal from Dunn's River Restaurant. Anybody eat there before? Okay, good. And so we decided that we want to sit down and create an investment club in Jamaica. Like that. And put things together. Have impacts that we can say that we can see that we were responsible for. You know, when we re if we can grow enough onions to reduce the importation of onions and they tell you, okay, now onions are down to 5,000 tons per year instead of 10,000, right? If we talk about eradicating pests organically, we have done that. We've, we, re we eradicated an, a, a worm called the beet army worm. And only, f only farmers in this room will know what I'm talking about. That is what was killing out all of the scallion and onion crop. And they couldn't figure out what, so they started to spray so many chemicals. But the more chemicals they spray, the wickeder the beet army worm got. <laughs> it's a Jamaican beet army worm, that. <laughs> and then we realized that we could find a solution organically. Because guess who else they killed when they were killing those beet army worms? They were killing us. They were spraying four chemicals. Chills run through my body to tell you about it. The first one that Farm Up Jamaica tested killed cockroaches. One, two, three. The second one was... The second one was even more potent. So I don't have to tell you what that did. 
But the bottom line is, you and I know that cancer, right now, Monsanto, which is a company that sells chemicals, you can literally go to a lawyer and he'll take your case if you have been affected by Roundup, if you have been affected by chemicals. Why? Because it is out in the open that these chemicals are not good for, for, for people and, they're, and again, just not good for anything at all. And so here's an opportunity for us to not only reinvest into Jamaica, but to bring clean food. Food the way it used to taste when you were a kid. You understand? So, so you know, I spoke to Council General, and Council General said, Neil, I want you in my office right away. I said, General, wait. Wait, Council General, I am actually in the middle of putting together this whole, organ, this whole thing that we have here. And she says, no, I have an investor. And the investor has, how much money? 500 million US. Okay, 500 million US. And what does he want to do with it? Well, he's an Argentinian investor and he wants to invest in farming in Jamaica. Somebody is seeing the light, but it's not us. We are thinking about some little one acre and I put in little pap chow and two lettuce. I'm going to go hustle to... No. No. When I take you down, down into Pennsylvania, you see corn until your eye bleed. Take you upstate New York. Where you see? Apples. Because we are not organized. We're not doing it the right way. We are throwing money after agriculture, but it is not organized. And so through Farm Up Jamaica, we can start to organize agriculture organically. We can reconstruct soil at this moment right now. And I didn't, I didn't sign up for this when, when we first started. We can reconstruct soil without using manure. And I grew sweet pepper by just using organic bushes, different things in the soil. And bringing up the soil quality, the macro and the microbiology. And making the soil be what Mother Nature wanted it to be. I grew sweet peppers in 24 days. Full size green sweet peppers, whatever you call them. And so, that normally takes 60 to 75 days, by the way. Okay, so 24 days is like unheard of. Especially organic. Because people think organic is going to take longer. The food is going to be smaller. Not true. These were huge. If you go to our Facebook page, you'll see the young kids harvesting those same peppers that I'm telling you about through climate smart organic agriculture. My name is Neil Curtis. Thank you. Thank you, Neil. Wow, very informative. Okay, now